Hello everybody, this is Hana speaking. It's a hot summer night, and what better way for an introverted Japanophile like me to spend it than with a great game of Mahjong. We're going to work our way up through rank C1 today. We got a bit of a head start from last episode's spectacular closeout round, so hopefully this won't take very long. Just like to point out that the rules have changed up a little bit. There is no Yakitori, there are only three Red Dora, and Kuitan is now available. So, that may affect how we have to play a little. Wonder what's gonna happen today. Starting as dealer again. Okay. Let's get to it. Now, first thing I'd like to talk to talk about today is Fire Emblem Heroes, because the uh, version 2.7 update was just announced, and I'm really excited about this one because it includes a mode called Tactics Drills, I believe, which is basically a mode where you're given a uh, predetermined set of units on a predetermined map and have to clear that map in those conditions in a limited amount of time. It's basically like a puzzle mode. And... Oh, that's mine. And I'm really happy about this because... I adore that kind of thing. Like in a in a Magic: The Gathering, the Duels of the Planeswalkers games, I absolutely loved the puzzle modes where. Uh, sorry, trying not to talk as much during the. Uh, point tally and round screens, because I'm going to want to put those in the highlight reels, but... Anyway, yeah, um... W when you have a situation where you're working with a limited... Uh, you're, you're working within a certain set of rules, and you have a certain set of characters or cards that all play by their own rules and have to figure out how best to work within the confines of the rules and resources you're given to find the correct solution to the problem. Ugh, I love it, I love it. My brain just eats that stuff right up. I cannot get enough of it. And by the way, that's a thing. I play magic. Though, perhaps that statement should be... should have several qualifiers included. For one thing, it's more like... I played magic. It's been a while since I've touched the game at all, and uh, God, I don't know what to do with this hand. Uh, secondly, uh, because I can't be bothered to col I could never be bothered to collect the actual physical cards, I uh, I only ever played the duels of the Planeswalkers games on PC. And third, because... As we've already gone over my PvP social anxiety... I, uh, only ever played the offline modes against AI opponents.
fourth. I don't know. I don't think there was a fourth. Uh, but, yeah, I never got to uh, learn the game as a kid and was always kind of interested in seeing if I could pick up the rules. Because it's not just the puzzle modes either. I, uh, I like collectible card games in general, figuring out their uh, rule sets, things like that. We know this. Look at how in-depth I covered the rules for Mahjong itself. I did get to play some collectible card games as a kid, including actually bothering to collect the cards. Among these, uh, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! Played a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! back in high school with what friends I did have on our lunch breaks in the cafeteria. Many fond hours were spent there. I could... I never had the opportunity to buy a lot of cards though. For one thing, my money was tight. And for another... For another, my mother did not approve of a lot of my hobbies. Yeah, growing up in a religious fundamentalist household, uh, that was my life, always, uh, always being told that Whatever the church felt like attacking at, a mo at the moment was going to be a bad influence on me and that I needed to stay away from it. I, I loved Pokemon, I loved Final Fantasy, I liked the Pokemon anime before I knew that anime was a thing. to try to put into words now. This world is at const in a constant state of war between or in a constant state of war in the spirit realm between uh between the armies of God and the armies of <laughs> Satan. No. Oh. That'll knock me out of first place. But 
yeah, that was my life, constantly hearing that everything out there was a bad influence trying to tear me away from God. Alright, didn't lose points there. Can't ask for much more than that. Try to do better next time. Uh, another four, four times point multiplier. It's too early for that. What it was like for me growing up, I, uh, I can remember, oh dear, player across from me has all the wind tiles. They could have a Yakumon on their, oh, nope, there goes the last west wind. I knocked that one off. Yeah. I was, as I was uh, saying, I can remember many days spent with my sister in high school. Getting home as soon as we could after school to play Final Fantasy games on our PS1 console. And always keeping a sharp ear out for the first sound or for the first sound of our mother's car pulling into the driveway because the instant the instant that happened, the game was turning off and the discs were being put away. <laughs> Another hand shot down quick and simple. Or Or getting up early on Sunday morning to watch the latest episode of the Pokemon anime on the TV, on the small TV I had in my room, trying to keep the volume as low as possible and always with my hand hovering over the power button or the channel button, just in case my mother decided to unannouncedly walk in. <laughs> in this hand. That was my life. I, uh, I never did grow up learning that it was okay for me to 
express my, uh, or share my hobbies with anyone else. Only that I had to keep them hidden. Now I can... Another funny story, uh, I can remember going out to the... Riding my bike out to some grocery store, probably at least a good two miles away. No. When I happened to need to do some grocery shopping for myself or the house, I forget, but I just, I rode my bike all the way out to that store because I knew that it had a vending machine that sold trading cards in it, and I just wanted... I just wanted one chance to spend some of my own money on Yu-Gi-Oh cards apart from the watchful eyes of my mother. Come. So, I gotta say that the past few years going to Anime Next with my girlfriend and the rest of the group has been a very liberating experience for me because for the first time it actually feels like I can be comfortable putting myself out there and letting everyone know this is who I am and this is what I like to do. It, in person, I mean. I, I guess uh, with, uh, with total strangers, I guess. On the internet, I've been already doing that for quite a while, huh? Wouldn't even, wouldn't even be at this point with uh, the cosplay group and everything if that hadn't been the case. <laughs> That didn't work out. Tenpai, no ten, no ten, no ten. Oh dear. But it was hard for me for a while because growing up the uh the fundamentalist out outlook on the world, for the longest time, that was my reality, but when I left for college, I started seeing just, I started seeing for myself just uh, how many more ways there were to look at the world. I started uh, using a lot more of my free time to you know, read about more uh, more scientific fields of study in my uh, in a uh, like uh, uh, natural history and cosmology and all of it really impressed upon me just how vast the scope of our universe and the world in which we truly live really is. You know, uh, nice. I better finish my train of thought quick, because this episode might be just about over already. Uh, 
Um, where was I? Uh, the uh, it, it's it, just just the just the dinosaurs are these creatures that lived sixty five million million year, died out sixty five million so sixty five million years ago, but were around for at least two hundred fifty million years and. The whole, the whole uh, family of them lived for over a hundred million years. That's just an impossible time scale for any of us humans to imagine, with our eighty to a hundred or so year lifespans. But it's especially hard for a fundamentalist with their with their view of the world spanning roughly. 6,000 years of recorded human history. Uh, you know, fundamentalists like to say a lot that the truth is all around us in all creation, but of course they're talking about God's truth. But When you really start to study things like cosmology or paleontology and just allow yourself to sort of take in the real truth that's all around us, how, how vast this universe is, how vast the timeline of the universe is beyond way beyond our ability to imagine. Uh, I don't know. I can't, I can't, I can't claim to speak for anyone else, but for me, it really, it really got me seriously thinking about everything that I had grown up having no other option but to take for granted and it was slow going at first, but over time I slowly started to open up my mind and try to take in other, uh, other viewpoints. Open myself up to other ways of thinking about the world. You know, like, I had, a. Uh, I had always grown up hearing that uh, evolution was evil, and uh, our schools were evil for trying to uh, for trying to teach it to us. But because you know, to a uh, to a person with a six thousand year view of all creation, it's an utter impossibility to imagine things like humans evolving from fish, or lungs evolving into swim bladders, or animals evolving from a single cellular life or single cellular life itself evolving from uh, from simple self-sustaining chemical reactions but these are tiny tiny random mutations and happenstance occurrences that that take that slowly establish themselves over millions and billions of years. It's it's a sheer impossibility for anyone alive to imagine, but have to uh just have to be willing to try thinking about it that way. I've got a fairly comfortable lead. Let's try defending myself as best we can. Oh, there's that. I think... Oh. 
I think my mother in particular was always deathly afraid of us being corrupted, so to speak, by adult humor and like shows ostensibly for kids and stuff. But, you know, Animaniacs, who could forget Yakko's Deathless. Good night, everybody. But, you know, writers put that stuff into their shows for two reasons. One, uh, it makes it more fun for the parents to watch with their children. Because the idea is for it to fly over the kids' heads while the parents get a parental bonus. And, uh, the second reason is because... <sighs> They're not, the, they're not the dealer, are they? The second reason is because writers are human too, and they want to have fun just like everybody else. The uh, non-existent third reason, which fundamentalists will tell you is the only reason, is to corrupt our nation's youth and tear them away from God. So, yeah, I missed out on a lot as a, as a kid that I've been making up for lost time on. So-called corrupting influences. Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, Harry Potter, Animaniacs, Simpsons, Dungeons and Dragons, all off-limits. Okay. But, yeah, sadly, that's the end of this episode already. And we may very be well be halfway through rank B3 now as well. Still got a long way to go for next time. <sighs> to be fi oh, rank 21. That is about halfway. New avatars. To be fair, my mother may have had a point. I mean, look how I turned out with my insatiable sexual appetite. But. I got that before I even knew what Animaniacs was. And I got it without ever watching a single episode of The Simpsons. Never was, uh, never had any actual interest in that show either, though. Or things like, uh, tabletop RPGs, which would, which absolutely breaks my girlfriend's heart, but. Anyway, I, uh, I guess we're done for now, uh, that certainly was over in a hurry. Didn't get to talk about very much. Part of that is because we, uh, got through that so fast, but the other part is because I still need to practice my rambling. I'm working on it, though. Well, we've got 381 or so points to plow through next time. Hopefully we won't get a four times point multiplier, multiplier right away, and we can spend a little more time talking about stuff. Well, we will see what happens. Till next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me on my Mahjong adventures. You can watch me plow through the previous rank on the left, or on the right you can catch just the important bits from this episode. Which you've already seen all of them, but, you know, for future reference. Till next time.